In this video today, we're going to be looking at what's called thermometer lag from a melt temp when you're doing a melting point experiment. Now, before we get into the actual experiment, just a moment about the setup. What we've got is we've got a thermocouple reading uh, a digital thermometer, which will measure inside the sample chamber of the melt temp. And then we've got the traditional thermometer as well with a melt temp that you normally use. So the thermocouple is going to make a quicker, more accurate measurement within the sample chamber itself. Uh, right now it's reading 21 degrees C in the room. And that is going to be compared to the number that you normally see on the thermometer itself. Here we are starting off a room temperature and you can see that the readings are approximately the same. Uh, the digital is reading 21.7 and the thermometer is reading roughly the same, uh, 21.87, somewhere in that range. So what we're going to do is turn on the melt temp and watch what happens to the difference between the temperatures. And in this case, the thermometer is a much slower reading of temperature than the thermocouple is. So the thermocouple will give us an actual temperature and we're going to see how much the thermometer lags behind it. So here we are, room temperature is perfectly fine. We're going to go up to about 100 degrees. We're going to zoom out a little bit here in the thermometer one so you can see it a bit. Um, and go up around the 100 degree mark. So here we are and I will keep the videos together so that you can see once we get into that range how the thermometer legs behind. I'm going to run the temperatures at a relatively quick rate so we can see the difference easily. And then afterwards, I'll run it at a slow rate where I will speed up the film so that you can see how if you do keep it very low to where it's a degree or two per minute, you don't see the leg that you see when you're going at a much faster rate. So for the fast rate, I'm gonna set this to about six, uh, Six out of, no, let's go five out of 10. So about halfway through the scale, so you can see how much the leg is once we get into the higher temperature range. So I'll turn it on. So here we are, the digital thermometer, the thermocouple is reading 50 degrees or just slightly above, and you can see on the thermometer, we're actually about 45 degrees, so we're already five degrees lagging behind in terms of the temperature within the sample chamber. Um, it's probably closer to 10 at this point. Now the thermometer is reading roughly 60 degrees and we can see on the digital we're at 72, 73 degrees in terms of heating. So now we're over 10 degree difference as we're going. So when the thermometer is reading 80 degrees, we're just slightly over 90, 91, 92 degrees on the digital thermometer. So it's holding at about 10 degree difference. So the thermometer is about to hit 100 degrees at this point and the thermocouple is reading about 108, 109. So we're still seeing significant lag here. Now what I always encourage students to do is once their material is fully melted, to turn off the melt temp. And if the thermometer keeps going up, then you know that you're reading a temperature too low. So let's do that now. Let's go ahead and turn it off. So right now, turning it off. And we can see that there is a little bit of lag in terms of the digital thermometer. However, in terms or the digital thermometer, but in terms of the thermometer itself, it is still going up significantly. So 
So it does appear that the digital has maxed out now and started to go back down in terms of the temperature. The traditional thermometer is still rising. And we may be at the point where the traditional thermometer is starting to drop down in terms of temperature. So when the thermometer continues to rise upwards after turning off the mill temp, you know that you're reading a temperature that is lower than the actual temperature within the sample chamber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow this to cool down to about 75, 80 degrees and then I will set it on a much, much slower heating rate, about 10% of the total power amount in the melt temp and we'll watch to see if we see the same differences or not through the range of 100 degrees. Here we are heating again at a much more controlled rate and you can see that the digital thermometer is reading 65.7 and looking at the normal thermometer it is reading about 65.4 something like that so well within error range and now what we're going to do is we're going to let it heat for maybe 10 minutes or so so that you can see that when you're under a more controlled rate, you don't see that difference in the actual temperature in the sample chamber and the thermometer itself. All right, so now the digital thermometer is reading 70 degrees Celsius. And if we look at the traditional mon uh, thermometer, it's reading, well, it's behind the seven, so it's a little hard to see, but about 69.5 degrees, somewhere around there. So within a degree, I would say, at this point. So we'll go ahead and let this run some more. Hopefully, it will make it to 80 before I run out of film and we can see how close they are to each other at 80 where before we were seeing a 10 degree difference in terms of the thermocouple digital reading and the thermometer reading. Here at 75 degrees, they seem to be tracking with each other as expected with a slower heating rate.
So here we are at 80 degrees on the digital thermometer. And if you look at the traditional thermometer, you'll notice it is at 80 degrees also. So this shows that if you maintain a slow rate of heating, the temperature, uh, sorry, the thermometer actually does measure correctly without lag. <coughs> So when you are doing your experiments with melting point, you can go fast through the parts that are not of interest to you or near the melting point. But when you're going through the actual melting point and finding good melting points, you do need to slow down your rate significantly up to one to two degrees per minute on average is what they say. And this will allow the thermometer to accurately measure the temperature instead of lagging behind and reading a temperature that is too low. So now if we turn off our melt temp, what we notice is that the thermometers or the temperature readings do not continue to go upwards, they start dropping immediately. So the digital, it's very easy to see that the tenth place is dropping right away once we turn it off and the traditional thermometer is not going up significantly anymore either and it's probably dropping, though it's much harder to see as we're looking at it. So when you do a melt temp, you can go quickly up until the point where you're interested in the melting point region. Then you have to slow down and slowly go through probably no more than a couple degrees per minute. And once your material has fully melted, I would highly encourage you to shut off the melt temp and watch to see if the temperature keeps going up. If the temperature keeps going up, then you know thermometer leg is an issue. If it stays the same or starts to drop right away, then you know that you've read an accurate temperature for the sample chamber.